The enhanced ACT is officially here. Here's what's changing and here's what's staying the same. So if you look over here, you can see all the categories from the legacy ACT and the enhanced ACT. The legacy is the old one, the enhanced is the new one, right? And so you can see across the categories, a lot of the distributions of questions are basically the same. Let's look at the English though. So if we look at conventions of standard English, it drops from 50-ish percent to 40-ish percent, right? So that means there's going to be fewer grammar questions, but there's going to be slightly more POW or production of writing questions. Those are questions on like transition words, how should you order sentences? What's the best way to start or end a paragraph? So maybe you're thinking, yay, I don't need to worry about grammar rules as much. And that's actually not the case. With fewer grammar questions, they're going to be slightly harder in my prediction. So that means if you miss one grammar question, that'll impact your score more. If you look at the math distribution, the biggest change happening is they're dropping the integrating essential skills category from 40-ish percent to 20 percent. And they're kind of reallocating those percentage points to the preparation for higher math. So if you look at the breakdown of integrating essential skills, you'll see these types of questions. There's like properties of real numbers, um, problem solving with real numbers, ratios, proportions, and percent, algebraic expressions, writing and solving simple equations. So those are the ones where like, oh yeah, uh, Johnny is like measuring a table and he has a ruler that's in centimeters. How can we convert it to inches and stuff like that? So a lot of those simple daily life questions are being removed from the ACT. Instead, they're going to be focusing on more of the stuff you might see in your honors pre-calc class or even your AP calculus class. More attention on numbers and equations and functions, less on real life skills. The category that I'm going to focus most on for preparing higher math is the stats and probability. I've just noticed over time that the probability questions have gotten harder and harder and harder. So technically, you're going to get a lot more straightforward questions in that they'll be direct and to the point, but the concepts you have to apply are a little bit more difficult. Let's look at the reading. There's just some small shifts over here, right? Key ideas and details have gone from 53 to 60 to about 44 to 52%. So there's not going to be as much detail hunting. And instead, you're going to spend more time looking at crap and structure and interpreting passages. So for the science, the, literally the passage is going to look the same. You're going to have 40 questions, but instead of 35 minutes, you'll have 40 minutes. And then the one area I want to emphasize here is that the background knowledge went from 10 to 20 percent to 15 to 24 percent. So they may be adding a couple background knowledge questions on like Newton's third law, simple biology, simple chemistry. And then there's these new questions about engineering and design. So basically, how do you put together a reliable experiment that doesn't have too much bias in it? So understanding trends, independent, dependent, and control variables, understanding the role of baseline and control variables, and how to prevent confounding in experiments. You're going to get one to three questions on those.